Is it wasted time to refactor code that does its job and you won't be changing in the future anyway? Um, no, it's complicated, but part of the way systems bloat out is that they have all these constraints that you have to meet as you keep modifying the system due to other things, right? And so this sub piece of the code that you didn't refactor might be imposing more constraints than it needs to, or it might be unclear what the constraints are. And that affects the rest of your code negatively. The, the general case of this, when you refactor data structures around, what I'm doing right now, even though it looks annoying and tedious, is actually one of the most powerful things you can do when programming, right? This is what I've learned is that statically typed, strongly statically typed programming languages let you do this thing that things like Lua, for example, don't let you do, where you just break your program and then you fix all the compile errors. And when the compile errors are fixed, you know your program works again, right? This is something that these dynamic languages don't let you do. And it's actually one of the most powerful programming techniques. No troll. It's really interesting because we're just doing a bunch of not very interesting, but also not very scary drudge work. But we're using this to migrate us from one place in the space of all possible programs to another one by a safe route where we don't smash everything up. It took me a long time to learn how to do this. It's not, it's not that easy, honestly. <laughs> to do it efficiently, where you don't take like a month to do it, you know. Any tips for such heavy refactoring without wasting weeks or months? Um, just make sure you're making forward progress. And I don't know, just have high standards for how much you're getting done. Like lots of programmers get very little work done, but think that they're working, right? Like, so here I'm doing these incremental things that are just renamings and stuff, but they're trying to point in a specific direction. And I have a very specific milestone in mind where I want to get rid of some of the ugly separate code in the back end that is handling the old data segment. So I have that goal in mind. If I don't reach that goal by the end of the day, I'm disappointed and I start to think maybe this didn't work out and maybe it was the wrong thing and we should revert, right? So as long as you have milestones like that, you'll know if you hit them or not. So back in my earlier days of being a professional programmer in my first game company, this kind of overhaul would probably have taken at least a week, if not more, and we're doing it in a day. This is like a major, it might've taken two weeks. I don't know. Like you just get better at doing this kind of stuff. Okay. Do you guys want to see a really cool trick? <clears throat> really cool. This is another silly programming language trick. So I have this variable C in here that's the concatenator. And it's defined in the outer scope. And I want to replace it with relocations. And how do I know for absolute certain that I got them all? What if I miss, like C is little, what if I miss some reference to it in here? This is a, a lot of code, right? And again, you can sort of trust your search and replace or whatever, but sometimes you're fallible in ways you don't realize. So here's what you do is you just put a scope around this, right? And you say, because all these functions are expecting a certain type. And so I could say, well, let's just say float, right? I'm going to define a local thing called C that's a float. And now all of these things that try to use it are going to be super embarrassed, right? Because they use the wrong type now, right? Every place we use C is going to be a disaster, right? So you do that and that just, you make sure that you get rid of all the uses in there and then you delete this afterward, right? It's very useful, dude. Few moments later. But see our first error is like line 965, which is way below the end of this block. So we know that that worked and now I can remove it. And we know that we're not using C anywhere in this giant block of code. Like not even in a macro, right? That's one of the things like maybe there was a macro in here that used that, that I forgot about. We know that's not the case now actually, cause it didn't compile. Very, very useful technique that you can't do in Python or JavaScript or any of this other stuff. Yeah. The type safety part of Python or the lack thereof is huge. Yes. Like a lot of the stuff that we did today, these grunt work refactors that I'm doing, would be a lot scarier in Python because you'd be like, I don't know if I just broke something. 
like we've done 10 things today at least where you'd be like, yeah, I don't know if that broke something. Where in C++, you're like, yeah, I know I didn't break something. It's very different. Very different. You know, there's this other thing about refactoring, which is like, it's, it's like math, right? The word refactoring sort of is borrowed from math in some sense. Um, there's a thing that I didn't understand because even though I had some kind of okay, pretty good teachers in school, um, they never taught me a certain specific thing. So like, you know, in math or even in, in physics sometimes where it's like, hey, you put the equations together and you get the answer, right? By, by, subs, by rearranging one equation. So it's like one of the variables equals something else and then substituting that right-hand side into the other equation, right? The th problem that I would always get into sometimes is that I would end up keep doing that and go back and forth forever and not make any progress, right? And the thing that was not taught to me very clearly, maybe I was stupid and just missed it, but I think, I think my teachers didn't really understand this usually, is that each of those equations represents a constraint or a certain number of constraints. And the way that you make progress is by actually having more constraints than the degrees of freedom in the problem. And the reason you combine equations like that is to reduce the constraints. And if you do that intentionally, you're making forward progress. But if you're just flailing and substituting some things into other things, you could just be lost in a maze of substituting that never goes anywhere, right? And I ended up that way a lot in grade school. So it's just to say that refactoring code is kind of like that too. If you don't really know where you're going, you could factor things back and forth and, oh, this seems better. Oh, that seems better. And it never actually is progress, <laughs> right?